Well, I'm here with the WBO Cruiserweight Champion of the World. Every time I say it, it still brings a smile oh, to your face, man. Lawrence. Does it feel good to hear that and just be reminded of, of that fact every now and again? Yeah, no, definitely. You know, um, now I've started to sort of settle into it a bit more and just be more appreciative of it. Um, yeah, so I feel happy and blessed. Let's talk about fight week then. You're 18th as a professional back here to headline at the O2. How's the mindset, how's preparation? You seem in great spirits, but how much are you just looking forward to stepping back in the ring this Sunday? Yeah, that's all it is. Uh, I feel good. I, I'm definitely getting a lot more experience now um, with just how I handle training camp, how I handle um, fight week. You know, um, I'm not usually nervous. That's been maintained as well. So it's just good to see the, um, the progression as a as an athlete and a champion. Looking at the quite shocking pictures we saw of the damage to the O2 Arena uh, this week, what was going through your mind when you were seeing that unfold? Uh, I was quite calm, really. I think I remember seeing it. I was um, at home and um, I thought the chances are the venue would probably get moved, but the fight will still go ahead. And worst case scenario, I'll just keep taking over until it was time to go. You know, um, For me, I just don't get too caught up in anything and just take it as it comes. For you, Lawrence, I think Eddie highlighted this at the press conference, but life has been a little bit eventful, shall we say, since you turned professional. Looking at the list, you know, you're a rapper, an author, a fitness and health trainer, a doctor, even a plant ambassador. Now. <laughs> but when you're sat here and you're, you're settling in to fight week to prepare yourself for a big fight like this, is this when you're at your happiest, would you say? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, when I win, uh, do you know what I mean? Obviously, fight week is fight week, but it's all leading up towards the night. I think to get another notch on my belt and say, you know, there's a guy who come from another country, trained for months to beat me and was unable to, you know, I'll get to pat myself on the back and, you know, say an, another job well done. And you said to Chris Lloyd when you were having that walk around Victoria Park in Hackney that you always had the belief that you would change your life, hence the name of your book, of course. Mm. But when you've been over the last 12 months or so, seen your face plastered over Piccadilly Circus and what you've achieved, has there been a moment where you've been able to pause in the whirlwind a little bit and, and give yourself a bit of a pat, a pat on the back, so to speak? Uh, not really. Not, uh, I mean, you know, there's been bits and bobs when I'm at home or someone calls me WBL champion or whatever, <laughs> and I get those little moments of, um, of you know, smiles and happiness. But um, no, nah, because I think there's so much stuff I want to go on and do. Um, every fight, you know, uh, for example, when I go to the ring on Sunday, I kind of consider it I'm no longer champion until I've won that fight. You know, it's up for grabs. It's, it's anyone's belt. Um, so it's up to me to go and demonstrate to keep it. Um, so I kind of don't really allow myself to get too, um, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. It's not complacent, but, you know, once you start thinking, oh, I'm the champion, pat on the back, you kind of feel like you've done it. But I need to keep a slight chip on my shoulder, a slight understanding that there's more that I want to go and achieve. So when someone like sees like comes along and he's got you know the whole of Poland behind him and the whole world to gain, I also have stuff that I want to gain. So I've got that same hunger to push him to do even more things. It's interesting you say that because Johnny Nelson always said that defending his world title gave him an immense sense of pride when someone was coming to try and take that belt from him. Obviously before it was you, you know, daring to dream to hear the words and the new, now it's and still. Does that yeah. give you a, a different element of focus at all? Yeah, definitely. I think and the new, it's like, you know, like everyone, I think that's obviously, it's, it's, it's hard to beat. And still is more so just maintaining that level of, you know, authority. And I think that it's important. Um, that's kind of how I see it now. And the newest excitement, it's new. It's now and still is very much, I've got to this um, level Let's maintain whoever's coming thinking they're gonna hit and then you I need to stamp once again my authority on the situation. Tomorrow, uh, not sure if you're aware of this, Lawrence, or if you have even thought about it, it'll be exactly five months to the day since you boxed Dylan Prasovic at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in what was your first world title defence. Is that one of those occasions when only when you look back on it now you perhaps realise just how big of a deal it was? Um Yeah, I feel yeah. I mean, at the time, I knew it was a big deal. I think, you know, I was just happy to get the, the victory. But I kind of look at it as a fight. Obviously, the spectacle. I think once I finished boxing, then I'd be able to go and, hey, I boxed in front of whatever, and I did this and that. But I, as of now, I kind of saw it as Prasovic as a boxer. Um, so I took that fight as what it was. It was a fight against my mandatory challenger, who I believed that I would stop, and I managed to stop. So, same with this one, I'm headlining the O2 Arena, it's amazing, you know, 
in my home city and everything, but I'm focused on beating Sizak style and um, keeping my KL streak going. Before we come on to talk about uh, this Sunday, of course, we saw on social media out in Dubai, I believe, with Anthony Joshua. Just that friend perspective you have, how is he, how's his mindset and how excited is he to have his shot of redemption this summer? Yeah, it's good. Um, he's just very hungry, um, training, training smart, training hard, um, focusing, just working on different things. So, it's, yeah, it's good. Do you feel, Lawrence, somewhat uh, let down by the other Cruiserweight World Champions that these unifications haven't been able to happen yet? Um, not yet. I believe if I'm able to stop Cizak and then stuff doesn't happen, then I will be a bit let down. But I understand, um, uni you know, unifications take time. They take um, belief in yourself and they take um, beating your mandatories and whatever else and the landscape being open. So I believe once I'm able to beat someone like Cizak, well, then I'll be disappointed if the fight's not happen. And one man um, who you've had a little bit to say about is Maris Breedis. He's going to be here this weekend as part of the the zone presentation team. Everything that's been going on, the bizarre stuff that's been going on with this whole Jake Paul saga, just as a, a fellow fighter and everything you sacrifice, have you lost maybe a touch of respect for him? Not as a boxer, um, maybe in terms of clout chasing and stuff like that, as a social media um, personality, most certainly. But as a fighter, if me and him were gonna box, you know, after I beat Cizak, then I would still, you know, treat the fight with that most respect and understand he's still a good fighter, it's just he makes pretty poor social decisions. But that's neither here nor there, I'm here for a, a tear up. No Jake Paul tattoo for you any time soon? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Let's come on to, to talk about this Sunday then. Outside of the unifications, did you just feel Cizlac was, was the best option and, and the best fighter who was willing to step forward and fight you as well? That's exactly what it is. I mean, there was, you know, obviously lesser fighters I could have got in the ring with and, you know, snuck a quick defence in and ah, no one wants to fight me. But Cizak was up for it. He was game. I knew he was game from when I was meant to box Glowacki last year or the year before, and ended up boxing Jizweki. Um He was he was having a fight, and he said he'll box me the week after. It didn't end up happening with you know I don't know if he injured himself or what happened, um, but it showed that he was up for it on a week's notice. So now he's had a couple months. Um, I expect to see a really stiff competitor, and it'll be really good for me to just kind of you know, um, show myself no matter how hard someone else trains or what they think and believe, I can show them a very different reality. Eddie actually told me on Tuesday that he believes Cizlac is probably better than some of the current champions. Does that excite you and do you feel it will help to certainly give you a good gauge of where you're at right now? Yeah, I think it will more help me to just be a little bit more explosive on the day. Um, obviously with mindsets and stuff, not taking anything for granted, being very, very sharp defensively and then very snappy in my counter punching and also I'm like I make me feel good when I'm and I believe I'm gonna be able to out muscle, out man, out jab, out um power and out stamina if that's a thing. Um uh, you know, one of the best cruiserweights in the world and just kinda of show my dominance here. It's been a good camp, you know, but ultimately I'm just a really good fighter so I need to just go and demonstrate that. He did say uh, to me when we caught up at the press conference that avenging Glowacki was high on his radar. Does it also excite you, though, you mentioned the word game, that you are in the ring this Sunday with someone who genuinely believes that he's going to beat? Do you, do you invite him to, to bring that energy to the Yeah, ring? 100%. I mean, honestly, if he, if he actually comes to... Oh, I'm gonna, because I think a lot of people get the wrong end of the stick. Because I've had 17 fights, haven't looked to lose many rounds, have barely been caught with good punches, they just believe... Oh, I'm not. I'm gonna get to him, and it literally just plays into my hands every single time. So I'm very much looking forward to him coming, looking for vengeance, and I'll send them back just the same. I send all of them back just with a KO defeat, and they get to just say, "Yeah, I tried my best," and then I move on to what's next. And you are a believer, Lawrence, of speaking things into existence. Uh, you mentioned the word KO. There is that how you believe this goes? If you, if you were to visualize it in your mind and speak this into existence. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think it'll be a KO between um, six and nine. Uh, I think the first, you know, three, three or four rounds will be quite cagey and competitive. You know, I'll be trying to get the range on, you know, seeing is he going to double, triple jab? Is he going to, you know, try and counter my shots? What's his game plan? I'll take the first few rounds just setting everything up off the jab and um, some, you know, some, some 
good physical contact, you know, when we get in close, just to let him know that the weights he does isn't enough. And then as we get into rounds four to six, um, if it's still going that far, I think I'll start to sort of, you know, land a few more cleaner shots, whether that's head or body. And then when we get into six and nine, um, that's when most people start to tire from the pace of the first part, half of the fight. And then the power and stuff starts to show, um, the difference in power and accuracy starts to show. And yeah, I think that's when I'll get rid of him. Well, the source, we're looking forward to it. Go yes. well, best of luck, mate. Thank you.